Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's look at the current through two parallel branches, the general case. In other words, we're not going to use any numbers. We have the current I entering the branch point. We have in the top branch resistor R1 and the bottom branch resistor R2. And thus the current will divide into I1 through the top branch and I2 through the bottom branch. How much current will flow through the top branch relative to the bottom branch? Well, that depends on the relative size of the resistance. If R1 is bigger than R2, less current will flow through the top branch, more current will flow through the bottom branch. And if R1 is smaller than R2, then more current will flow here and less current will flow there. If we want to write that into an equation, we can then say that I1 will be equal to the ratio of R2 over R1 times the current in the other branch, I2. Again, if the resistances are the same, then of course that will be 1 and the current through both branches will be the same. But if the resistance in R2 is twice the resistance in R1, if this is double the resistance from this one, then notice 2 divided by 1 or 2 to 1, that's the ratio, that means that I1 will be twice I2. In other words, if this resistor is twice this resistor, the current through that branch will be twice as much. And if this resistor is three times this resistor, notice that will be a ratio of three to one, then the current through this branch will be three times the current through that branch. It's inversely proportional to the ratio of the resistances. In other words, you can see that I1 will be the ratio of R2 over R1 times I2. And likewise, we can say that I2 can be written as the ratio of R1 over R2 times I1. It goes, of course, both directions. If we then realize that I1 plus I2 will be equal to the total current I, and instead of writing I1, we can write I1 in terms of I2 using the values of the resistances, we can then say that R2 over R1 times I2 plus I2 is equal to the total current I. Now I want to add the left side together, but notice that I don't have a common denominator, so I have to multiply this times R1 over R1. So this becomes R2 times I2 over R1 plus R1 over R1 times I2 equals I. Now notice that both terms on the left side have the same common denominator R1. I can now combine those two. I can now say that R2 times I2 plus R1 times I2 divided by R1 is equal to the total current I. And then if I factor out an I2, I can then write that R2 plus R1 over R1 multiply times I2 equals I. And then finally, if I solve that equation for I2, I can come up here, I can then say that I2 is equal to the inverse of the ratio because R1 goes up here and the sum goes down here. So I can write R1 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied times the total current. And then likewise, if I then solve this for I1, I can then say that I1 is therefore equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2, oh, that's an R, times the total current I. And this is how you calculate the current through each of the branches if you have two parallel branches, if you know the resistance of both branches, and then in terms, of course, of the total current entering the branch point. And that's how we calculate the general case. On the next video, we'll show you an example of how to utilize this and finally, we'll show you the case of three parallel circuits. So stay tuned and we'll show you the next example.